I'm Hannah, and today we're going to talk about things you should and shouldn't do when you teach business English. Let's start with do's. Number one, focus on functions. When you teach business, the main focus is on the phrases or set expressions students can use right away. The course books are usually divided into topics, situations students face on an everyday basis. Each unit covers the functional language necessary for communicating ideas on this topic. So when you teach business English, concentrate more on this, not on grammar or vocabulary. As usually people who study business English work in international companies or they have foreign partners or clients and they have to communicate in English. As a result, the main aim for business students is to get their message across either by speaking or writing it. And this functional language is something practical they can take and use today in their correspondence or conference call. Number two, include case studies. I would even say it's the future of business courses. What is a case study? It is a real problematic situation or a case from a business context that students discuss, solve, or give their opinion about. Contrast the decisions with each other. Why do business people need them? Well, first of all, it's just interesting for them, especially if you find something from their job, the field, or area of interest. This is the job. As they're authentic, they ignite discussions and just doesn't students start comparing it with their own business situations. They encourage students to talk, give opinions, it stimulates their real life situations where they have to debate about or prove something. And moreover, it's close to their professional part of life, as quite often these case studies are about ambiguous issues where there's no one solution and they have to weigh all the pros and cons, choose and prove the best option. In addition, they do use the target language, and that's the point. Hooray! You can read more on this in the article in the SkyTeach blog. The link is below. Number three, personalize your lessons. That's what we have to do on all the courses we teach. However, Business people need personal lessons even more. I need more power. <laughs> they are not interested in talking about, let's say, weather or family life, transport, fashion, sport, and other typical course book topics, unless they're related to their job, of course. Business students have a specific purpose, and they have a certain era that they work in. So, the teacher's job here is to personalize general business English books. Focus on the skills students need most of all, both language, and business communication. Choose appropriate topics, guys. This I cannot stress enough. And also find useful case studies. Stimulate their business situations as much as possible. Try to be as realistic as possible. Integrate their real work communication in English. Example, like help them with emails they have to send to their clients or role play tomorrow's negotiations with partners. Now, let's talk about the don'ts. So number one, don't teach low level students business English. No, don't do it. From my experience, the lowest possible level to teach business English is pre-intermediate. It's quite hard to learn all these business phrases, read articles, listen to business discussions when students do not have enough general English background, when they do not have enough vocabulary and grammar. It's not enough. As we discussed earlier, you do not focus on grammar and vocabulary in this kind of courses. You do cover it, but formally. So if you have an elementary student who needs business English to have an interview in an international company to get a job there, I would advise to teach him the basis first or basic English first, some general English. Moreover, if the student's current level is pre-intermediate, his business English level is frequently lower. So for example, if a student is intermediate, the materials to choose is one level lower pre-intermediate. Two, don't teach proper, perfect British English. What I mean here is that usually course books have specifically recorded audios with perfect British accents. The effect of the performance was stunning. But business people, more often than others, face non-native English speakers. Yeah. They deal with people all over the world, and for most of them, English isn't the first language. You think this bad neighborhood? <laughs> As a result, they need to listen to conversations, talks, lectures with Indian, Chinese, Russian, German, French, Spanish, and loads of other people. It's better if you ask your student who they work with and find some videos or audios with people of these nationalities and accents. In addition, I would try to give students as much authentic materials as possible. Number three, don't teach general English and don't go by the book. Two and one, right? 
So don't teach general English unless they ask for that. As I mentioned earlier, business English students do not want to discuss teenagers, problems, or family issues, or children. Moreover, do not just follow the course as it, as it is. Let's say your students are financial specialists or accountants, and the next topic in the syllabus is HR. Do they really need that? No. You can skip it or cover only the things that they really, really need. Or in contrast, you have an HR specialist and the unit is about logistics. What can they say on that? And how would you apply this? I'm sure they don't want to burn daylight. And you want your students to have results as fast as possible. I hope these do's and don'ts were useful for you and you found something new and now teaching business English will become more productive and more efficient for you. Remember to subscribe to our SkyTeach YouTube channel. Nastya from Handy Hacks is preparing for you a creative video on Teacher's Day. There you'll see magic transformations and lots of surprises. Follow the news on our channel. Bye for now!